Had a great, you know, as you mentioned, great performance. Ranked yeah. for the state of rounds undefeated. Yep. Runner up for the season two invitational. So, uh, quite the resume for that deck at this point. We are underway here between Brady and Carmazin. It is a green white aggro versus black white mid range. Jesse did mulligan to six. Brady looks as though he may have kept his seven. He starts off things with a mana confluence, which is very telling, and then an experiment one. So maybe he kept the one lander here. We don't know. Now, a weakness of green white aggro, not the best deck against Pack Rat. It, it, is, yeah. a, it is an issue. And in fact, when we had this matchup, the finals of Indianapolis, Andrew Shrout against Owen Turnwald, it was Pack Rat that doomed Andrew Shrout in those games. Really competitive games between those two players, but it was Pack Rat that got the job done. Here's the voice resurgence. That's going to evolve experiment one into a 2 2. We're getting to the red zone. Karmazin is down to 18, already, already under the gun here. And we don't know if Karmazin has a second land. It looks like he does. It's a swamp. And let's see if it will be a Pack Rat or not. And it's going to be a bile white to take care of experiment one. So that's going to go away. Voice of Resurgence forcing Karmazin to play his instant speed removal as sorceries. Also don't want to get fancy against green white aggro. There are pump spells on the list. Sometimes they have gods willing. Better just kill stuff when the shields are down. An attack here for two is going to put Karmazin down to 16. Let's see what the follow play is going to be. It'll be a fleece main lion. Going to follow this up. Brady will take one from Manic Influence. It's a sun blade elf. So a fantastic start here for Hal. Sunblade Elf is another, you know, when people ask about what are the M15 players, Sunblade Elf's already found a home in this deck. Yeah. Another two power one drop, and it's another sink alongside things like Boon Seder, Mist Cutter Hydra, that give you a little bit of a hedge in case you're flooding out. Oddly enough, as much talk as there has been, and this will be a life being zombie, and that is going to miss, as you see in Johnny Call of the Pride and a Plains. As much talk as there has been about M15 and how it affects Standard, and there's a ton of new cards in that set, even when you and I were in the booth kind of, you know, just kind of reviewing the cards before the set even got released, we never talked about Sunblade Elf. Yeah, it, it just is an, it's an innocuous seeming card, but it fits in so well to what this deck's up to. This deck is looking to give the beatdowns, and Sunblade Elf does a fantastic job of that. Now you see Brady's draw for the turn was a Soldier of the Pantheon, but it's not time to cast that. It's time to deploy a Johnny Caller of the Pride. It's going to start on four, and it looks like it might be headed to five. We'll see how Brady does want to use this card. Life being Zombie missed, so it's not going to be a two for one, but it does have the ability to trade with something here, depending on how Brady attacks. I think what I like to do here is pump the Fleece Blade Mine and attack with that and Voice of Resurgence. You're about to hit the stage of the game where some Blade Elf is online. I wouldn't want to just trade that. And attacking with these two creatures is pretty free. Well, he's going to attack with everybody. Going to make the Flea Spain into a 4-4 four, four from the counter. So we'll see how Karmazin does want to block here. It's not, not a great time to block, honestly. You know, he does have to block because he obviously doesn't want to take this much damage. But, you know, what do you block here in this situation? I think you might be right where it might just have to be Sunblade off that you trade with. Well, if you have a two-mana removal spell of some sort, you could say, I'll take it all, untap, hit it, hit Ajani with Mutable and Lifebane Zombie and kill something. So it's not 100% that he's going to block here. But he would have to have a two-mana removal spell and an untapped fourth land to even consider that line of play. Well, we're going to see how the blocks are going to go. And da -da. you can see Jesse is pretty unsure of himself at this point. But that will be a block. So going to trade with the Sunblade Elf. So it's time to untap. We will take a draw. Brady getting a lot of damage through. And this is kind of the power of Green White. House had a great start this game, and those creatures are so very big, and they're really resilient too. If Hal draws a fifth land next turn, for example, what well, you do? Yep. And maybe that's the reason he was willing to trade off the Sunblade Elf, is he already had something powerful to do with his fifth mana, which is go monstrous with Fleece Man Lion. You see Jesse right now. He's got a copy of Thoughts. He's in his hand very, very far away from Elspeth. Doesn't even have another land. He's just going to concede the game. He could have cast Sign and Blood that turn to draw, but he goes down to eight to do that. And then you've got a Johnny pressuring perhaps the minus ability giving flying double strike or something. He knows the writing's on the wall. He concedes the game. Hal Brady, former Standard Open champion in this room, does win game number one with Green White Aggro. We're going to head to the sideboards here. We will start with Jesse's, which you have in front of you. Three Duress, a Banshee Light, and Underworld Connections, two Dew Blades, a Deicide, three Nyx Fleece Rams, a Liliana Vess, and Erebos, God of the Dead, two copies of Drown and Sorrow. I think you're going to see the two copies of Drown and Sorrow come in here alongside Nyx Fleece Ram and Banishing Light, two Dew Blades. Removals, blockers, and some sweepers. Uh, Drown and Sorrow is not perfect for this matchup, but it's probably good enough. 
on this side of things for Hal, he's got four copies of Skyglasher, a Banishing Light, a Deicide, three copies of God's Willing, two copies of Tessin Tactics, two of Johnny Steadfast, and two copies of Hunt the Hunter. Skylast plus a Johnny Steadfast has become stock for these decks now. We don't see Unflinching Courage anymore. Yeah, Steadfast can be good in games that don't involve Skylasher, also allows you to play offense, defense, yeah. with, as opposed to Unflinching Courage where you're just attacking. Uh, the cards I like the most here, truthfully, is just God's Willing. I don't really care for very much else. Banishing Light is fine, uh, but he's already got three copies of those in the main deck, and there's a chance that he might actually want to pull away from that a little bit. Hunt the Hunter, not for this matchup. Same thing can be said for Skylasher. Johnny Steadfast is a little bit too slow to the board. And then Satessian Tactics is fine. I don't know if he really wants those or not, though. So uh, I have seen Satessian Tactics come in pretty aggressively by most green white players in pack rat matchups even if it isn't really that good in the abstract because pack rat is such a concern and usually success and tactics can be set up to kill a bunch of pack rats because your largest creature takes out their largest rat and then you sort of chain down the line taking out their subsequently smaller pack rats i'm not the biggest fan of it in the matchup but if you're really worried about pack rat it's one of the better cards you can have well, both players are going to shuffle up here. We will watch Black White Midrange versus Ruined Aggro continue in just a moment. But we do want to take a short moment to talk about our favorite squirrel friend, the brand new Acorn Mystic. You can, of course, get two of these tokens anytime you do op enter, excuse me, a Legacy Open Series event. And, of course, you do see all the swag on the screen there and the playmat, the dice bag, the deck box, and the sleeves. Beloved, this token series. And the set of artwork that we're cracking out here. So what I can see now for next year, see where the StarCityGames.com is there at the top? Mm -hmm. And you put like a killer in red font, yeah. kind of like a blood dripping type thing, and then it's killer creature collection. And then you just have animals attacking things. A shark with its mouth open about to chomp down on the StarCityGames.com banner. There it is. There it is. There it is. Open for interpretation. You know, then you have maybe on, in the background a hippo chasing people. Right. Them trying to run away. Capsizing a boat. That's the big one, I yeah, think. Yeah, flipping over a boat. That's the big one. The capsizing boat is our go-to offense, but it makes for a great image. Yeah. So we'll talk. I mean, this sort of creative work, not my specialty. Me either. Generally speaking, I'll leave it to the experts, but I believe the killer creature collection is just waiting to be done here. So just, I'm going to start pushing on people. I think that's just a moneymaker. That's right just... There. What are we even talking about here? <laughs> you know, why are, why are we not doing this? Let's get that rolled out. But for right now, we just have our normal Creature Collection series. Again, mm -hmm. Acorn Mystic as of June 13th. This is available. And of course, anytime we do enter a Legacy Open, including the one tomorrow here in Dallas, you can get two of those Acorn Mystic tokens. Very popular. And yeah, you see, there's a bunch of different stuff you can buy if you really like this sort of stuff. Play mat, dice bags, sleeves, deck box, the whole shebang. So... Green White up a game, four and one. Scott Lip was four and zero oh coming in the last round, so at the worst he's four and one. I, I I think he was three one and picked up a loss. He was three two really? on our leaderboard. Okay. Unless there's a mistake on our leaderboard, which I suppose is possible, yep. I think he may be already done for. Okay. And Joe Lissette too, two two and one. Yeah, that's tough. Ouch. Yeah, that's tough. This is a time, and the thing for Joe is, you know, he's got to play out these next six rounds because he needs those points. Oh no, there's no, there's no cutting out of work early today, uh -huh. Joe. Got to get your grind on. You got to put in a double shift of magic. And let's not forget tomorrow. You know he's going to be playing miracles. You know that's going to be a long day. But this is his last open series event before our Invitational in New Jersey for season three. So every point matters for Joe. And as you mentioned too, we don't know, you know, we don't have a great idea of what the IQ schedule is over there in the West Coast for Joe. You have to imagine there'll be some event to play in, yeah. in between, you know, after this event is over in the Invitational. So San Diego's got a pretty robust IQ scene. I mean, there's one, not every weekend, but a lot of weekends. So he can still get points. I mean, that's how he actually was able to expand his lead is, you know, two weeks ago, he got third in IQ on a Saturday and then one in IQ on a Sunday. So that's how he was able to get some open points to expand his lead over Alex. So we'll see if he can con con continue to do that. But today will be, this is when we talk about going to the Players' Championship, we have the highlight reel, tournaments won, top eights, awesome top decks. This is the stuff that's not going to be on the highlight reel. It's the, you're in the 2-2-1 two -two bracket of an 11-round center tournament. you got to put your head down and just keep playing. Kind of some breaking news here. I know that on the uh, on the pro circuit, they did announce the brand new Grand Prix schedule. We've talked about it a little bit. There's mm -hmm. one in San Diego, and there's also one in uh, Seattle. Uh, Star City Games going to have three to host next year. Excellent. We have uh, one in Miami again, okay. March seventh and eighth. That's right around my birthday. As here's a thought sees. One in Charlotte, June thirteenth. One of my favorite cities. Which one? Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte's great. And then we have one in Atlanta, November fourteenth and fifteenth. So that's pretty sweet. 
Not as sweet as Thoughtseize, but it's pretty sweet. Thoughtseize is going to reveal a hand of two locks on spiders. Don't click those. Uh, Sunblade don't, Elf. Don't click it. Yeah, Sunblade <laughs> Elf, uh, along with an Ajani. And then a couple of lands here in Temple Garden, a Plains, and a Manic Influence. A great opening hand here for Hal. Not really the most dynamic of hands, but a good clock. No. Just do not select Loxanon Spider. Don't, Don't touch fall. it. Don't touch no. it. It's a trap. It just comes into play. Just let him cast it on turn three. It's all right. There goes a Johnny. Hal's going to draw a card. It's a copy of Banishing Light. Temple Garden going to come and play on tap, and there's a 2 2 for one mana to start things off. What a deal. <laughs> that's what, that's the, what's really nice about this green white deck is it's a bunch of creatures that make you say, what a deal. Yep, over and over and over again. <laughs> it's pretty much like the most honest deck, too. Yep. I mean, yeah, the creatures are, you know, really efficient for their cost, but you know, by and large, it is just what a deal over and over and over again. And here's a sign in blood. You have to pay two life to do that and then two from the signs. So. It's a store where everything's on sale. It's just what a deal. Yeah, and you look at it and you say, why is it on three, sale? Three, three for two with a power? Yeah. What a deal. How do you guys stay open? In comes the Sunblade Elf. Here's the forest. <laughs> How do you guys stay in business? Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually kind of tipping his hand by playing that forest because what that means is that's one of the two cards that he's drawn that uh, Jesse hasn't seen yet. Yeah. Assuming Jesse's really on the ball, it is a, it is a bit of an information leak. Let's see if Jesse has something to do on turn three. Lifebane Zombie would certainly be good right now. If I had one, I would cast it. And Jesse is going to weigh his options. He does have a Doom Blade there that he's looking at. Also has a Banishing Light, too, if he wants to be efficient with his mana. But a little unsure of himself right now. It looks like he's going to tap three mana. Okay, he's going to go with Banishing Light. Now, you might be asking yourself, why Banishing Light that when I can Doom Blade it? Well, it's all about being efficient with his mana. The next turn, he could go, you know, cast Sign and Blood and Doom Blade the same turn. Besides that, Green-White aggro plays a lot of instant speed. Advent of the Worm, Boon Seder. Mm -hmm. Sorcery speed tricks are a lot worse than instants. So there's a smiter there from Brady. Karma Zin does draw a card. Looks like he wants to play a Mutable, but maybe not. And he will play that. And now there is a Pack Rat. And I like casting Doom Blade now if he can, but he doesn't choose to because God's Willing is a card that these Green-White decks have been playing. Yeah, don't mess around. Just, especially when you have something like Pack Rat, like you have this great path to win the game. The only thing that can happen to you to have things go wrong is you kind of get tempoed out. There's a Banish like to take that off the table. Going to follow up with the Temple Garden tap before passing the turn back. Will Brady over to Karmazin. Karmazin will draw a card. Now, this is exactly how Jesse wants the game to go. Oh, this has been just a perfect curve. He has had to pay some life to get some things done with Sign and Blood and Thought Seize, along with Godless Shrine. But, by and large, he's happy with how this game has gone. Loxon Smiter going to stare down a Blood Baron of a Scope, and we know who wins that war. Green White is not that well equipped to beat this card. This is a Thought Seize. There's a Smiter. Hooray! That's, that's a freebie. Hooray! Yep. <laughs> you don't see that often. This might be the first time I've seen that. I think it might be the first time on camera. Blood Baron might have to slow its roll a little bit now. It depends what Jesse's leftover is, but if he can't kill the spiders, then uh, attacking is not the best here. Yeah, there's a Temple Guard, or excuse me, a Temple of Silence. That's going to leave the top card, it looks like, on top of the deck. He's going to consider that a little bit more. You see, all he can do is laugh right now. He's saying, third smiter, really? No one's, no one's thinking that Thoughtseize guy is a victim here, Jesse. <laughs> so don't even, don't even look for sympathy. Let's see what this is going to be. It's going to be a pack wrap before passing the turn back. Yeah, poor you. <laughs> As Hal draws another <laughs> land. <laughs> and this is kind of where the game shifts because Jesse's draws are better than Hal's in this situation. Oh, easily. And Jesse's draws, the floor on Jesse's draws is it's a rat. Yeah. That's the worst case scenario. And the best case scenario could be it's an Elspeth. Hal draws another land. This is where uh, this is where things get tough for Green White. And Jesse will make a rat, discard a Godless Shrine. As you mentioned, that's the floor. Yeah. Jesse might draw Elspeth and cast it, maybe. But for the most part, we're just gonna be looking at some rats. Looks like we might see some rat beatdowns in just a second. Maybe, maybe not.
And I think at this stage, Blood Baron's a fairly safe attack. I guess he always has to be worried about Advent off the top. Yeah, I would rather just kind of hang back with Blood Baron, I think. Like, you know, in this situation, for example, you can just attack with a rat. It's a 2-2. Two -two. You've got a Mutavolt back and a card in your hand. You don't want to get overly aggressive because Green White can kill you out of nowhere, but hey, here we go. Yeah, certainly a Johnny enables all sorts of kills. And this is a spot where, you know, if, if Hal's hand is something like God's Willing or Boon Seder, it's pretty messy. Yeah. You gotta discard a card. Make a rat. Yeah, so he's just moving in. He just wants to try to get this game over with. Now, gonna be able to gain four life from the Baron, gonna go up to 14. You gotta be able to deal four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So, you know, this play is a little bit risky, but it's gonna work out. As Brady just has a mitt full of lands, draws a copy of Fleecebane Lion for the turn, but that's not all that good. That's just another creature. And Hal Brady knows that he is dead, so he's going to pick up his permanence. And Jesse Garmazin is going to win game number two, even though he did thought he's a Loxon on Smiter. Yeah, but it was kind of at a stage of the game where it wasn't like it happened on turn one or anything. And he also had no choice. You had to take it. Yeah. So game number three will be underway in just a moment here. Both players are going to take a look at their decks again. See if they want to change any of their configurations here. And it looks like Hal is very, very happy to change his as both players having a laugh. How are you how much are you anticipating the return of Texas Billy Moreno to competitive magic? I don't think I can put it into words. Yeah. I, I don't know I don't know what to tell you. I just I love it. Yep. I Hang, love it. Hanging out in the background there behind Hal, for those of you who don't know. A pro tour runner up, Billy Pro Moreno. Tour finalist. Member of Wizards R&D, lead developer on M15, and has been out of the has le left Wizards close to a year ago, so he's close to being able to return to competitive play. And we are very excited about having him. Been a year? In September, I think. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's that's kind of crazy. Been a bit. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna be really happy to see Billy come back. Billy is just it, it's a funny. treasure. It's funny because like I, I can't believe I'm gonna say that. I think he's old school. He's that's, not. No. He's not, though. Uh, yeah, I know. He's not. It's just kind of crazy to say that. But, you know, when I met Belly, it was in, it was in 2005, I think. Or, I mean, whenever, whenever he got second in the Pro Tour, which well, I'm pretty sure was 05 because it was in L.A. Yep, 05. Yeah, and that's, oh, my God, I'm going to say it. It's almost a decade ago. So my first interaction was at that Pro Tour. I grinded in and was missing cards. Billy yeah, you had grinded never... In, you grinded in with a real doozy. Billy never let, had never met me before and loaded me cards, sight unseen. That's our first interaction. Then Billy came in second with that awesome Psychotog Lone Brew. He's also the, the builder of the Hulk flash deck that Steve Satan won Grand Prix Columbus with that yep. was playing Dark Confidant. Yep. So he's built numerous incredible decks and is an awesome human being. I guess he's got that going for him, too. Yeah. He does okay. He's, he's a good man, and he'll be back soon. And he likes to brew. Oh, yeah. There are few people who like to brew more than Billy. Yeah, he is a brewer. Sometimes the brews hit. Sometimes the brews whiff. His brews are actually pretty good, though. A brewer of decks, a brewer of tank top plus colorful, colorful shorts combos. Yeah. Does all sorts Not of brewing. Not everyone can do that. No. <laughs> Not <laughs> that everybody is can very do that. true. But Billy can. Billy can. I'd have to actually wonder. I, I wonder what the best deck Billy brewed up with. It's a Hulk flash deck. I think so. I mean, that's his, the that's the his best. PT deck was so good. I also think that he had he had the zoo deck that sided into glare yep. plus V2 Gazi land. He had that in Honolulu. Yeah, I another remember. master top sixteen that pro tour. I, I believe he got ninth. I believe. Another another masterpiece. Yeah. He's not afraid to brew it up, and he will be back eventually. And I will be very excited when he does. I don't know if he's going to globe trot or anything, but he will definitely be back, and that should be fun to watch. But for right now, we will watch Hal Brady and Jesse Carmazin continue to do battle here. Green-White versus Black-White mid-range, two very popular decks in our standard format. Green-White definitely doing very well right now in the Open Series. It's a sweet deck to watch. It's got some light synergies. It's easy to get behind. It's hard to feel like when you lose to it, you got cheated. It's a sweet deck. Yeah, what's your opponent do? Played really good creatures and Just killed them. Just could not beat that stupid smiter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one says that. You yeah. Know? <laughs> My opponent drew experiment one and I lost. Yeah. Sorry? That's, yeah, sorry. Sorry, I guess. 
My opponent drew Pack Rat, and every card I drew didn't matter. God, so stupid. Yeah. That does suck. Police Man Lion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is just the most honest. It was such a good deal up front, and then later on in the game, it was a different sort of good deal. <laughs> the most honest deck there is, and it's been cutting up the Open Series. Going to see if Hal can win another game with the Temple of Silence here from Jesse, as Hal did start off with a Sunblade Elf. Let's see if Hal has the planes. Oh, oh he does. yeah. That's the start. And a Fleece Man. Oh! <laughs> two, two for one, and a three, three for two. That's it. Ring the bell. See if Jesse's able to draw. Man. Just so honest. One of each different basic land type and play two. That's why you play eight of each. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah, this is what we call this is gonna be a beating. There's a voice. This is gonna be a rules call. Oh, he's gonna, oh this is, no. This now this is a lesson. You need to do this when he's tapped out. This is a lesson. Instance. Don't always need to be played as instance. No, you gotta you gotta cast that on your turn when he's tapped out. Now it's funny to say you only need to learn this lesson once, but that's not true. Because it happens so often. And also, you know, not killing that creature on his own turn could honestly lose him the game oh, right now. Easily. The game easily. could just be over right now. I mean he's got a, a hand, a curve of removal, you know. If he kills the fleece made lion, he gets an untap and heroes downfall the sunblade out for whatever. Yeah. And then He's got more than enough time to get to Blood Baron or Elspeth or whatever the top of his curve is. Now he's facing lethal in two turns. This is seven damage coming across next turn. And Hal's still got four cards in his hand. Just got to scry. Yep. This will be three mana. That stupid fleece main lion. Yeah, here's the hero's <laughs> downfall. And now he's got to cast this on his own turn. So now Hal, if he you know, has like a Johnny or you know whatever, he can just play it. He's going to attack for four here. He's going to put Jesse down to nine. That is a mana influence. That's a fast turn. He probably doesn't have anything. So well, <laughs> you know, we'll find out. Yeah, chances are he has nothing and just is flooding. It's not impossible that he has nothing. It's only four voices. Yeah, you're right. Or four, uh, four, four advents, advents rather. And, Excuse me. And Boon Seder. Sure. I have a feeling he has something to cast. I'm just going to put that out there. Jesse going to tap some mana here. That's a Devour Flesh. I think you sacked the voice. Seems, you know, yeah. seems like a safe sacrifice to me. Maybe he has Selesnya Charm. It looks like that's what he's thumbing here. Yeah, he will sacrifice. So here comes the token in just a moment. Radio gain a little bit of life as well. Something else pretty nice in this deck. It's a great addition. What I like about Green White Aggro is it still has game when it gets a lot of mana in play. That's my favorite part about it. Because of Boon, Seder, and Sunblade Elf. Yeah. And it's a 2 2 for one, often enough. Those are really the only kind of aggro decks I like to play are the ones that, you know, when, you, when I am flooding out or whatever, I still have things to do. Yeah, your Cloud Goat Rangers or your Fire Bolts or what have you. <laughs> Figure of Destiny. Yeah. That's why it's my favorite creature of all time. Good early, good, good medium, good late. Four good deals. Yep. Love it. And the best creature type. A Kithkin? Duh. What is a Kithkin? It's just a made up wizard slaver thing? Google it. All right, I'll tell you. It's the best thing in the world. That's what it is. But that's not an answer. Well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> an experiment one pre combat here to bolster the elemental token from Voice of Resurgence. This looks like it's going to be a Doom Blade. Gotta be thrilled if it's a block with Muta Ball here because that's just another turn off of casting Blood Baron. Yeah. Is there another God's Willing? There's not. Okay. So just an attack here for two. Jesse's gonna go down to seven. What is how having that grip? I, I actually think those are just banishing lights over there. Yeah, and that's really rough here if Jesse's able to get to Blood Baron. Mm -hmm. There's There's a Temple be, of Silence. You can only be so reactive against a deck like Black White. Because they have so many ways to arbitrarily beat you. You can't get Blood Baron with Banishing Light, even if they generate three Elspeth tokens, and then you Banishing Light the Elspeth, a lot of damage is already done. Voice of Resurgence, the draw, going to play this pre-combat, of course, because of Experiment 1, and because of Instance. So, here's that. Of course, the question is, do we attack with both creatures? I think you do. Oh, yeah. Because if he's blocking with Mutavolts, you're pretty happy with that. Just do not allow him to get to one of his Haymakers. Mm -hmm. Any trades with Mutavolt here are great for Hal.
just gotta keep on keeping on. It's pretty straightforward with the green-white aggro deck. Play a creature, make your other ones bigger, attack you with them. If you have something, that's cool, and if you don't, that's cool too. Looks like, yep, Mutavolts are gonna get up. It looks like they're gonna both be blocking. Now, if you're Jesse, you're, you're really hoping your opponent doesn't have Selesnia Charm, and doesn't, so both those creatures are gonna go away. But this devours two more removal spells at minimum. It's a slow clock, but... Manic Influence to draw. Here's an attack for two. Karmas is going to go down to five. But Brady's not able to take advantage right now. All he can do is pass the turn back, still holding those Banishing Lights. So if Karmas does have Blood Baron, and there's a Caves, and there is the Baron... This game basically ends. There's Celestia Charm. You're a little late. Yeah, Jesse still has to respect the possibility of Advent. Mm, yep. That's, you know, that's a factor in all this, but those Banishing Lights are killing Hal right now. If those were anything, yeah, any, any creature, creature uh, I think he wins this game pretty easily. There's a land. I wonder what this is going to be. Oof. 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 Uh. Does I mean, he attack? I think with a blood, backup Blood Baron, the answer is yes. I think you can attack here, too. And here's the thing that's really tough is that, yeah, I, I think, yeah, he comes to the right conclusion there because he could just die out of nowhere yeah. the next turn, and he needs to gain life. It's so important for him to gain life. So he's going to go up to nine because Brady has a Celestine Charm in his hand and his land, so if he drew a Johnny this turn, he would just win the game. Yeah, Boon Sander or Johnny is another thing, Yeah, you know. There's Manic Influence here, Sunblade Elf. You gotta take some chances against green white fairly often because uh, they have so much range. You can't just leave yourself at five life for multiple turns. You gotta yeah. do. You gotta do something. And this is exactly why this black deck splashes white. Blood Baron is, is fantastic in the appropriate matchups. This is probably the best one, honestly. Um, of the most po of the popularly played decks, Blood Baron is probably best against this deck. You would think it's great against Mono Black, but we've seen too many instances where it's not as good as you would think it would be in that matchup. It's fine. It's, yeah, it's definitely fine. And there are games that wins on its own, but Devour Flesh, Life Bane Zombie. Yeah. There's some factors. Yeah. It's still super powerful, but not 100% of the time. Those other White Splashes, of course, for Elspeth and Banishing Light, Sin Collector out of the sideboard. The White Splash is good. You do pay a cost with your mana. Goblet Shrine, Caves of Coleos, Temple of Silence coming to play tap, but. You can, uh, you can work your way around those costs. As you see Sunblade Elf and Celestia Charm trade with a Blood Baron, but Jesse is at 17 now, but... Oh, there's the advent. There's the advent. So if Karmazin isn't careful, things could turn here. And there's been several turns of... Well, he obviously doesn't have advent, so it, had to, it basically has to have been drawn. And Jesse just played his land right off of the top of the deck, so I'm, I would be very surprised that card in his hand is a removal spell. Very surprised. He's just going to pass the turn back. He puts on the brakes. Wow. Showing a lot of discipline there. If you're Brady, I think you have to cast this half in the worm. I think. And I feel like now he's kind of given away that he does have Adam in his hand by thinking so much at this, at this point. Yeah. Why would my opponent think this long at the end of the turn? Draw a card. Ugh. Another copy of Banishing Light. And so now Voice can't attack. That's a thought, Seize. Well, now you got to cast it. The cat is now out of the bag. Yep. So here comes the big worm. And now a second cat is out of the bag, which is don't really worry about trying to resolve Elspeth Bane or, zombies. Yeah, and, or other stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. there are two banishing lights over there for Hal Brady. So, worm token incoming in just a moment. Karmazin has had that one card in his hand for some time now. And we don't think it's a good one. What is this? Three mana, maybe a Banishing Light? Yeah, that's really good. This that's is a really good. A great turn here for Jesse. Yeah. I thought he's huge. Good play by not attacking too that turn. Could have got absolutely ruined. Yep. Sequenced everything right. Yeah. And because his life total is so high, he can afford to play conservatively as he did. Yeah. That was the big one. 
both players making sure the life totals are appropriate here as Blood Baron's gaining life and Brady is taking some damage from Mana Confluence. So they want to make sure everything's okay. Now, again, the, what makes it interesting is that, hey, how could you draw another Advent of the Worm? Boon Seder's not bad either. That, I mean, that's a blocker. Yeah, and for two. If he can block, that's all he can really ask for. Karmas is going to draw a card. He's going to send in. You got to try. You got to take one to do so, but you got to try. Here's Boon Seder. Can Hal get out from under this? Hal saying, am I allowed to block? The answer is yes, I believe. Yeah, and it's a life main zombie. I have nothing. Um, that's, the, that's the one card Hal can really easily beat at this point. Now, here's the thing. Jesse could have played Life Bane Zombie pre-combat, saw that there was a Boon Seder, and not attacked. Yeah. I'm not sure if Boon Seder was on his radar. Yeah. He might have been as well, it's Advent or Bust. Mm -hmm. But Boon Seder uh, could have been, this could have been avoided. Yeah. He could have at least been in a staring contest where if he draws a removal spell, could then start attacking again. The thing is, he's going to play Life Bane Zombie anyway. So you might as well, oh, you might as well do it. Yeah, you yeah. might as well know. Now, here's experiment one. So now Brady says, all right, let's get moving. I got to try to close this game out as fast as I can. I've, worked, I've made my way through two blood barons. There's a Temple of Silence off the top. Let's see where that card's going. It's going to the top. Got to be a little bit scared there if you're Howl. But hey, what can you do? You just got to keep attacking. Draw a card. This is an attack for, looks like it's going to be something pre-combat, a Fleece Main Lion. That's going to involve that, an attack for four. Carmison's going to go down a little bit lower. Looks like to 13. And of course, Brady can make that Fleece Main Lion monstrous next turn. Carmenson draws a card. What would he have kept on top and not cast? No idea. There's a voice of resurgence in play. I think you go monstrous with this thing. What what's the ca what card could have Jesse kept? I don't know. He thought about putting it on the bottom. I have no idea what that card could be. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine what it was. Oh, pa was it pack rat? Maybe it's pack rat. There's that. Yeah. This is Advent of the Worm, and that's a concession of the game. Hal Brady with a top deck Boon Seder, able to take care of that Blood Baron with Scopa and get the job done, moving on to 5 and 1 with Green White. A harrowing, a harrowing set of games there. That third game was, was pretty insane, and I think if Jesse checks out the, scopes out the terrain with that Life Bane zombie before attacking with the Blood Baron, is a much different outcome. If there's Evan in Hal's hand, you at least know about it. If there's Boon Seder, you force it into play. In another event, you give yourself an opportunity to find a Doomblade effect for whatever Hal potentially drew before attacking with your Blood Baron.